Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about issue number one of X-Men Blue Origins, written by C. Spurrier. But before we dive into the story, I want to say thank you for watching my videos and leaving great thoughtful comments down below to help the channel grow. For without all your help, I wouldn't be doing this. And I'm happy to be bringing some value to my viewers. Thank you. So with that said, this issue opens with a flashback, a flashback of the Hellfire Gala, where Charles attempted to order all the mutants to leave Earth by a gate. Now, if you remember correctly, during that event, Charles attempted to make Mystique leave. But due to some mysterious reason, it had a weird effect on Mystique and led her to, quote unquote, fall to her death. But see, as we know now, of course, she survives. But anyway, upon her fall, we get a narration from Kurt's manifestation. Because according to this manifestation, later on in this story, the manifestation will be extremely important to the plot moving forward, but as of right now, it is just here to give us context and serve as a guide. A guide to catch us up to the current day, to where we are now in the story. Now speaking of what he was showing us, we see on the very next page, exactly what happened to Mystique when she woke up. Because the first thing she did was attack the nearest Orca soldier. And not only did she attack the soldier, but she proceeded to take control of their vessel and escape from the Hellfire Gala, all while not being in the right state of mind. So with Mystique out on her mission, she, as we all know, found her way to New York City during the events of the Uncanny Spider-Man comic line. Now while there, we see Kurt chasing Mystique as she continues to cry out for her baby. But see, that's when Nightcrawler told her that she must be confused, because her baby boy, her son, was perfectly fine, but just as he said those words, Mystique with no hesitation turned around and trained her weapon on him while saying, how dare he lecture her about facing fears when he too acts as a big hypocrite himself because she watched him avoiding whatever broke him by helping the same sapient scums who attacked them during the Hellfire Gala. But just as she was saying that, a wave of pain in her head caused her to double over and collapse to the floor on her knees. So with Mystique down for the moment, Nightcrawler proceeds to tell her that everything she is saying is ancient news because he believes that her mind has turned back to the point of her deepest trauma. But before he could finish the statement, Mystique had yet another burst of energy and took her gun and placed it right to his chin and said that he didn't know anything. But see, despite his life being in danger, Nightcrawler had to correct her by saying he knew everything she told him because a long time ago she'd masqueraded as the wife of a Baron Christian Wagner. And as his wife, she exploited his wealth, his home, and his power. In fact, Kurt always assumed he was just an easy stopgap during Mystique's separation from her true love, Destiny. But before Kurt could say Destiny, Mystique tells him that he isn't allowed to say her name. And as for Christian, he wasn't an easy stopgap. For he wasn't an easy anything, because he was as boring as he was weak. So with disdain in her voice, Nightcrawler immediately switched his trail of thought to who he believed to be his father, which involved an affair with Azazel. Because in the past Mystique thought she was in love with Azazel. Now she pictured herself a mutant queen with a darkling prince upon her knee. But she was a fool because he was nothing but a lecherous old immortal who abandoned her the moment he left his mark. So while Christian grew suspicious, the charade slowly started to approach its end. So of course, Nightcrawler assumed at that moment is when Mystique killed Christian, but he was wrong. Because Mystique goes on to say that she lived as a human in that backwater town for two years until her mask slipped. Until the moment she felt Kurt's skin upon her own. But due to that fatal mistake, the town folks caught on and lynched mobs quickly formed and ascended upon her. So in an attempt to save her child, she fled. Now at this point in her retelling of the story, everything starts to get a little hazy. Because no matter how many times she's continuing to retell this story, something about it just didn't add up. Because for some reason she remembers going back for something after escaping the castle. Now at first Mystique couldn't recall why exactly she went back, but she did recall two things. She remembers for sure that she dropped a child off for safety, and second, she vaguely remembers going back to the dangerous castle to rescue someone. And at that moment, Raven remembered the person she wanted to rescue was her wife. So with that realization setting in for Raven, blood once again began to spill from her eyes and mouth as she struggled to recall any new information. Now, this right here completely threw Nightcrawler off, because, to the best of his knowledge, Destiny had nothing to do with this original story. So with confusion once again flowing back into Raven's mind, she proceeded to point the gun back at Kurt. But this time Kurt was not about to play this game with her, because in a single slash of his hope sword, 
He managed to slice her pistol clean in half. Now, when it comes to the Hope Sword, symbolically speaking, it's the hope for a better world and the courage to fight for it, without certainty or even faith in success. It is in the darkest hollows that the brightest flames are lit. Now it is his hope that she will not turn the flames upon him. So he allows her to borrow his light, so it may help her escape the dark place in her mind that has become a prison. So with that said, Mystique took hold of the Hope Sword, and within a split moment, all her memories came rushing back into her mind and her shouted brain was repaired. So with tears in her eyes, Mystique cried out that it's all about destiny, for they never had a simple love. Because when it came to Irene's mind, it was always ruled by chances and what-ifs, while Raven's mind was unruly. So because of their chaotic nature, it was strange to adore someone so complicated because their coexistence was full of passion that ended in pain. But if there was one thing they had, it was time. So whenever they found each other, they made sure to love each other no matter where they were, until they eventually parted ways again. So Destiny with her valleys of misery and Mystique with her thrill-chasing and rageful tendencies both had their individual hunger, and so they agreed long ago that they would take lovers if loneliness or desire demanded it. So politicians, warlords, and aristocrats became like toys and novelties to be enjoyed and exploited. So with that said, the rule was no matter where they were, or whomever they were sleeping with it had to benefit both of them, for their love of each other would bleed the world dry. So with everything in place, within a few years Mystique married Christian, and everything he had became hers. So the first thing she did was honor her love for destiny and hire her as their maid. So with the two reunited, it didn't take long for Azazel to enter the picture, for Christian's novelty wore off quicker than most, but his resources warranted the longer game. And eventually one of his business associates caught Raven's eye. And after some time, Raven grew to know Azazel pretty well. And unfortunately, Azazel became a lecherous old narcissist cosplaying as a demon. And in time, Raven grew bored of him even faster than her husband. In fact, the only reason why she stayed with him was because Irene encouraged the affair. So with that said, when it came to their personal love, the tall tale signs were there for Irene's departure. Because every night she was distracted by visions and nightmares that kept her awake and kept her distant. So with things getting rough between the two, Raven asked the question that usually leads to their separation. But to her surprise, Destiny's response was different, for this time she was going nowhere. Because she wanted a kid with Raven, a kid they could make together, a kid they could conceive and love. Now in the past, there were other pregnancies, other births both before and after by accident, conveniences, and even tragedies upon arrivals, but never a child conceived in love. So together the two of them created life, created a baby boy, created Kurt. Now, when Kurt first heard this, he was completely confused. He had no idea how this was even possible. But that is when Raven speaks up. She tells him that she is no ordinary shapeshifter for she has lived for years as a sapien male and even more years as a female. And through that time as both genders, she has observed a lot. And the only true binary division lies not between genders or sexes, but in who is denied the rights. Now during her explanation, Kurt flat out says he has no idea how any of the science and genetics actually works. So that is when Raven doubles down by breaking everything down to him. She says everyone thinks that she can just simply shift skin like a clever blue squid, which is far from the truth, because unlike the squid, Raven could instinctively command herself to change her cells, hormones, and ribosomes at will. She could rewrite every trace of her genetic code. So with that revelation out there, Kurt is completely shocked, for he tells his mother that her power is really close to playing God. But before he could say the last word in his sentence, Raven cuts him off and says, Don't you dare. These creatures, referring to humans, will pierce their ears, laser their retinas, and fit metronomes to their hearts, but adjusting a thread of RNA, retooling one molecular factory into another, and suddenly she is tampering with the divine. Now, normally she wouldn't dirty her hands with genomes, and borrow traits from the flesh she touched, like from Christian, Azazel, and countless others. But she needed them to be the shades on her palate, and the material used to create a child. But see, Irene always had a knack for persuading her. And on a side note, Mystique states that she always wanted a daughter. Now on the next page, we get a data entry from the desk of Dr. Nemesis. And in this entry, the doctor states that Mystique refused to turn herself over for research, but luckily they have a sample of her DNA on file. 
and through that examination, he discovers that Mystique Power isn't just shapeshifting, for she was able to rewrite her entire genetic code without a single conscious thought. Now just to put this into perspective, there isn't a computer in the known galaxy capable of performing this feat with the same accuracy and speed as Raven. So long story short, Mystique is not a shapeshifter, she is more of a gene shaper. And then Dr. Nemesis goes on to say the only thing that prevents him from branding her as an Omega-level mutant is her inability to mimic others' ex-genes or manipulate her own. So with that out there, he ends his report by saying he is happy that Raven has little interest in science. Now following that interaction, we jump back over to Raven undergoing yet another wave of memories. Memories of her ending the entanglement with Azazel, something she believes no other woman has ever done. So with her relationship over with Azazel, at home, Raven started to grow a baby bump at the same rate as Irene, to keep Christian happy. But still the paranoia grew, for he saw how Azazel looked at her, and eventually her husband started to talk about paternity tests. So with tension growing, Christian ended up spying on her, and one night his efforts paid off, as he crashed into her room to see Raven and Irene together. Which in all honesty made things easier. Because in the end, Raven had no choice but to cut him down in cold blood and from time to time Raven then went on to use his face to keep up appearances. And every so often, she would return to the role of his wife in full pregnancy to continue the deception. And during those months alone with her love, was among the happiest months of Raven's life. Until the day finally came for Irene to give birth, and through 22 hours of labor, our hero Kurt was born. Now at first the doctors didn't know what to think, in fact he went as far as to believe Kurt was dead due to a lack of oxygen. But as soon as Raven took him, she knew right off the back that her child wasn't dead nor deformed. For in Raven's eyes he was perfect. And of all the evils she has committed, the worst thing she could imagine in that moment was to let her beautiful baby boy behold a lie with his first blinks. So without a second thought, Mystique took her original form so Kurt would know his mother as she truly was. So with Raven identity known, the doctor and his nurse immediately took off to tell all who would listen. So as the rumors spread, the town folks started to prepare to attack her castle, so with no time to waste, Raven took their child and led the mob away, until they eventually grew tired of the chase and turned back to hang the mother, Destiny. So to prevent that from happening, Raven had Kurt away to go back for her love, but when she got there, Irene was already gone, and when she returned back to Kurt, he was also missing. So with both her loves gone, Raven stood alone following the happiest days of her life, and all that remained was loneliness. Now jumping back to the current day, Kurt couldn't help but to remove his mask and reveal his identity. But to his surprise, Mystique already knew it was him under the outfit. In fact, she probably already knew it deep down, since she first saw his ridiculous costume. But anyway, either way she felt like she didn't need Kurt's pity. Because according to her, Xavier pushed way too hard, as he always does. And like most of those who stayed on Earth, she resisted and as a byproduct her mind regressed to a point of pure focus. So with Mystique being completely dismissive, Kurt suggests that maybe they can talk about what she just revealed. But see, Mystique wasn't having it, because according to her, everything happened a lifetime ago, and because of that, they spent a lifetime apart. Which means, Kurt is no longer that baby and Mystique is no longer that mother. And as for this whole trip down memory lane, this is on Kurt, due to him giving his mother his hope sword. So with that said, Raven was dead set on seeing it through, dead set on seeing where these unchained memories lead, no matter the pain that may come with it. Now there were several years of numbness, sex, murder, money, and nihilism and the illusion of meaning. Until one day Irene let herself be found. And on that day, Raven showed up fully prepared to take out Irene until her once lover revealed that a young girl who would later become rogue needed their help. Because up to this point, Anna Marie was on the street for the last month and the pimps and the pushers have already noticed her. And Mystique now has two options to pick from. The first is to kill Irene and the second is to save the girl because within the next 15 minutes, fate would pull the young rogue under. And just like that Irene did what she always does and persuaded Raven to do as she wished. So with the two women reunited, she waited just a little bit longer. She waited until they were snuggled on the golden barbs of parenthood and at that moment Irene disclosed everything. Irene disclosed why she encouraged her pointless affair with Azazel. For she already knew about his arrival. 
and due to some visions of the future, Irene had foreseen him taking over the world, and the part she couldn't bear was how he was going to bring an end to them all. So she made sure a child was born so Azazel could assume it was his own. And as the child grew, Azazel would become preoccupied with his heir, and during their interactions, the boy would sabotage Azazel's big stupid ambitions, not just once, but many times. But to pull it off, Kurt had to be left in the woods, then Irene had to tell the witch where to find him so he could be brought up as an outcast who was battered and burned by the world. And after every blow, he would rise above it better than before. With each loss, he would grow to be great. Because at the end of the day, this was Destiny's plan. But see, it wasn't Raven's plan though, because, from her perspective, her son was not created to be a tool for Irene's games. So with Raven completely beside herself, Irene offers a method to fix her mistakes, which on a side note I believe was a cop-out, because her version of fixing their problems was just to forget it ever happened. And she did this by seeking out Charles. Irene tells Charles that she wants all the memories gone, she wants to forget about Bavaria, her pregnancy, the visions, everything, and all she wants to focus on is her wife and daughter. Because in her words, they made the ultimate sacrifice for the greater good, and she also believes that they deserve to forget about it. Now on the other hand, Raven is completely against what Irene said, and the only reason why she is there is because she wants to forget about the pain, but under one stipulation, and that is she still wants to remember that Kurt is hers. So with the women's request on the table, Charles agrees to their wishes, but he too wants them to agree to owe him a favor, and just to keep their privacy, he also wipes his own mind following dealing with the situation. So with their request granted, Mystique realized that Charles made her forget her memories and made her believe she abandoned her son. And when everything went down at the gala, Charles didn't break her mind, he just broke his own work of suppressing memories. So with pain eating away at her heart, over allowing her love for her son to be destroyed, Kurt with no hesitation, went to his mother's side and said, Your son is here, and she doesn't ever have to be alone again. And Kurt is here not because of fate or prophecy, but because he needed her. Because he needed her just as much as she needed him. Because Kurt needed his mother his whole lonely life. Following that, Mystique took hold of her son and cried tears of love, for in the darkest hollows the brightest flames are lit. So with that said, this issue of X-Men Blue Origins comes to an end. Now to me this comic was pretty solid, the writer was able to fulfill Christopher Claremont's original idea while diving deeper into Mystique's power set. Because the way they described her power means she could potentially be an Omega level mutant. And as an Omega level mutant, Dr. Nemesis states that there could be a possibility that one day Raven could mimic other mutants' X genes, which would make her nearly unstoppable. And as for the controversy that springs up around this issue, it's not my place to address, because I could care less about politics. Now with that established, I hope you enjoyed this video, and please don't forget to leave a like and a comment if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.